Thank you for listening to the Gift Up podcast. Continuing on with the power rankings, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come in at number three. And I want to start with Tom Brady because I hear a lot of people say that he's 43, he's washed up, it was all Belichick in New England, Tom Brady's the reason why the Patriots didn't get farther in the playoffs last year. That's a bunch of baloney, man. He had nobody to throw to. Edelman was trying to be a number one receiver when he's not. There was nobody else to make plays on the offensive side of the ball for the Patriots. And Tom Brady still hung in the pocket and still made the best out of every play. So that's a bunch of BS. I think you're getting an extremely good player still in Tom Brady. I think he said he was going to play until he's 45, and that's what he's going to do. I take his word for it. I haven't seen his game slow down at all. I disagree with everybody that thinks that. And I think about that 2007 year with Randy Moss and how much Tom Brady was able to do with pretty much just him. I'm not saying the rest of the team wasn't good. You know, the tight end group, the offensive line, everything. I mean, they had a good team, no doubt. But as far as weapons goes, this is the most Tom Brady's had in his entire career. So if he was able to put that type of numbers up with the weapons he had with Moss in that year, what can he do with this? You got arguably two true number one receivers, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans. Mike Evans being one of the better 50-50 jump ball receivers in the league, one of the more physical receivers in the league. Chris Godwin is more of a speed route runner type receiver. Hopefully Tyler Johnson can stay healthy. But just the fact that they got Chris Godwin and Mike Evans alone, that's more than Tom Brady's had since Randy Moss. And we're going back 13 years, for God's sake. So I'm excited about this. The tight end group, O.J. Howard, Rob Gronkowski. And then you're thinking about Gronkowski with a year off, a year rest. He's fresh, ready to go. I know the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are trying to downplay it because Gronkowski is that secret weapon that steps up in big game moments. But to act like he's not going to be a big piece to this offense, that's a lie. Rob Gronkowski, that's huge. It wouldn't doubt me if every single game in crunch time moments they use Gronk to go out there and take a big hit and make a big play. Wouldn't surprise me at all. And then the one thing that I thought was going to be an issue for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensively was the running back position. But yet, they filled that in a matter of two months. LaShawn McCoy, and then they get Leonard Fournette. Then you still have Ronald Jones. I think Ronald Jones has a lot to prove still. Maybe he can still develop. I don't know. But Leonard Fournette is the number one back, despite what Bruce Arian said. Yeah, I know you don't want to throw any of your players under the bus and you want to play the good guy, but I think we all know that Leonard Fournette is the best running back on this roster. I think we all know that. So, yep, they fill another hole. This team on offense becomes more complete for Tom Brady. And the offensive line, I feel pretty comfortable with, too. Again, they make another investment Tristan Wirfs, that's for Tom Brady. And in my opinion, one of the best tackles coming out. I had Andrew Thomas and then Tristan Wirfs was right there after him on my list. So good pickup by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's going to help Brady out a lot. And you'll have Donovan Smith at left tackle. I'll be honest. I would like for the guard positions to be a little bit better. I don't think that they're going to be a stellar run blocking team. But when you're going to have to worry about Tom Brady stepping in the pocket, buying time, and throwing to two legit number one receivers, plus having to worry about Leonard Fournette rolling right over you, plus Gronk and O.J. Howard, it's going to be tough for defenses, man. And I cannot wait until week one when we get to see the Patriots on full display. It's or Excuse me, the Buccaneers on full display. It's going to be fun. And it's kind of – no, it's, I mean, it's kind of funny that I said that because – it kind of feels like Tampa Bay is getting that, that Patriot love. Like, we saw the Patriots were in, interested in Leonard Fournette, but the Bucks end up with him. It just seems like when you win and, like, you're somebody like Tom Brady, everything just works in your favor. Like, I'm not talking about calls on the field, and you guys can put that in the comment section if you want. But it's just about attracting talent and, like, the domino effect. Like, Tom Brady's here. Okay, here comes Gronk. They draft Tyler Johnson. We draft Tristan Wirfs. Leonard Fournette comes to town. And all of a sudden, you have one of the best offenses in football. 
just like that. So <laughs> when you got the greatest of all time, it does help. It really does. Let's get into the defense. And I want to say right now, this front four is underrated. Now, I really like the linebacking core, but when I think about Jason Pierre-Paul actually being able to suit up and play, even with the club, I know he can get me 10-plus sacks, especially when he's got help. The Dominica Sue, Shaq Barrett, that is legit good. There is no doubt about that. That's like top caliber, elite type good. And then the linebacking core, Devin White, Levante David, one of the best linebacking cores in football. Devin White was a great surprise as a rookie. Levante David, he's just got to stay healthy, and he's one of the best linebackers in football, you know, even entering, you know, eight, nine years in the league. So that, that front seven, I think, is very underrated, particularly the defensive line and the pass rush. Yeah, you got Shaq Barrett, but it's going to be a little bit different this year when Jason Pierre-Paul suits up with him a full 16. And then, of course, uh, Dominica Sue wreaking havoc in the interior or from the defensive end position. I like what they got here. Put up points on offense, get to the other team's quarterback, stop the run. They got the linebackers. They got the DNs. They got the physicality. They put it together. And, you know, again, that just shows you, uh, you got to think Tom Brady made a calculated decision in coming here before any other team, before the Chargers, before anybody else. That had to be part of his decision. And then looking at the secondary, that's where there are some issues. And, you know, you can't have everything. Hopefully Antoine Winfield Jr. can step up and be a legit piece for them. But I think they are going to have some problems in coverage. I don't see any corner here that can go against a legit number one receiver. Quite frankly, I don't know if they can handle a high-end number two. The safety position's not too good either. So Antoine Winfield Jr. is going to have to be that star player for them to step up and be an impact player because Carlton Davis, Sean Murphy bunting. I, dude, I, this is bad. This is, I didn't really notice this until just now. Like, as far as just if I was ranking corner groups, this would be down there. This would be bottom 10 in the league for sure. Uh, so I guess I'll end on that note. A lot of positives, and I don't want that to overshadow the fact that they're going to get to other teams' quarterbacks. A good pass rush always remedies a bad secondary, which I just said they have a great front seven, so no problems there. Tom Brady's going to be putting up points, making other teams angry anyways. But they could have used some secondary help. Um, with that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.